word gets out about Khrushchev's speech and it starts to radiate out. Oh, yes. And you describe how different people are putting different pieces together. Um, but then you're, you're off doing your, your research about this Ukrainian. Um, and um, you find yourself in the library one day and a little bit of history gets made. It was, it was a wonderful experience and it happened several times. Um, I was doing research on a man named Sergei Semyonovich Uvarov, who was a minister of education under Nicholas I in the middle part of the 19th century. Bear with me. And what I was trying to do was to get into the Lenin Library to do research. And two or three nights a week, when I was finished with work, I would go down to the library and really try to get in. And it was an effort. And they kept turning me away. No foreigner was allowed into the Lenin Library. And I kept trying to make as many friends as I could with the librarians. And there was finally one woman who was sort of kinder than the others. And she allowed me to get in. And then once I was in, the question became, what would she give me to use? And she began to give me secondary sources. And I explained to her that for a PhD at Harvard, I needed primary sources. And well, she wouldn't go that far. But she did begin to give me material. I was sitting in the Lenin Library, which the, the reading room is about the size of a football field, an immense library with a lot of rectangular tables. And everything is very periodically, everything is very orderly and structured. And there were police around, but they never interfere. And these kids were serious about their work. And I was writing down my Uvarov information when I began to hear young Russians stand up and begin to denounce communism. This is in the Lenin Library? In the Lenin Library. I was astonished. But I did not even raise my head. I kept my head down and just began to write everything that I heard. And they were denouncing communism, Stalinism, which was OK then, but also Khrushchev, and also the corruption and the miserable living conditions. And they were just letting it out. And then other young people stood up. And then the whole place stood up. <laughs> and then they got on top of the tables and began very demonstrably to rip up copies of Pravda and throw it down on the floor. I was watching a student rebellion. And it was a remarkable sight. And I tried to stay as close to the bottom of it all as possible, <laughs> writing it all down. And at 10 o'clock, the library was shut down. And I thought, wrongly, that all of these kids would pick themselves up, then go down into the street, and go to Red Square and do something. <laughs> but they didn't. They simply vanished. Um, and I was very surprised about that. And I was sort of standing there saying, what the heck do I do with this information? So what did you do? I walked as fast as I could to Spasso House, which is the home of the American ambassador. And because I had a diplomatic passport, I showed that to the Russian guard. That was no problem. He let me right through. And then the Marines were standing back there. But that was no problem either, because I lived in the same house called America House on the, alongside the, the Moscow River. And the Marine recognized so you. They recognized yeah. me. I was able to get into Spasso House. I said, could I please speak to the ambassador? If I were a real Foreign Service officer, as some of you in this room may know, that is not the right thing to do. You don't wake up the ambassador. How old were you? You're 25 still. Yeah. <laughs> I figured, what the heck. I had this material that I thought was so fabulous and so interesting. And I woke him up. He came down. He could not have been nicer. It's polite, wonderful as he always was. And he kept taking notes. And then suddenly he stopped. And he said, we got to go to the embassy immediately. And he called a car, and we were stopped. And he then wrote about a 20-page long 
cable which went to the State Department but was the first um, eyewitness <laughs> reporting that the department had on how deeply and profoundly the Khrushchev speech began to affect the people. Yeah. 